In this video, we're looking at the Khan Academy module on recognizing rational and irrational numbers. So all you're doing in this module is taking each of the numbers they give you and then dragging into their corresponding groups, dragging them into the rational group if they're rational and the irrational group if they are, are irrational. So let's just quickly go over uh, what these numbers are. And we're going over it in the context of just recognizing some simple versions of rational and irrational numbers. So rational numbers um, are numbers that can be written as a simple fraction. So rational numbers are somehow, if you can turn your number into a simple fraction, then your number is rational. If you cannot do that, then you have an irrational number. So a simple fraction, what is that? Well, a simple fraction is a fraction, let's say, in the form of a over b, right, where a and b are both integers or positive or negative whole numbers. So this is where a or b, a and b are integers. So let's look at some common examples and we'll look at some examples as they, as you'll probably see them in this module. So first of all, the number 5. Is that rational? Yes. Can we write it as a fraction? Yes, 5 can be written as 5 over 1, right? It could be written as 10 over 2. It could be written as 15 over 3, right? There are an infinite way, number of ways to write this as a fraction. So this is a simple fraction. So any whole number, of course, is rational. Any counting number, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth, are all rational. They can all be written as fractions, right? And if you're curious about 0, remember, 0 over anything where, except for 0, is a fraction. So 0 over b, where b is any non-zero integer. We can't divide by 0. And putting the number down here as 0 will be dividing by 0. So these are all rational numbers. Whole numbers are rational, positive or negative, right? And then some trickier cases, I think, are when you deal with um, decimals. So for example, any terminating decimal, that means a decimal where the digits, whatever they are, end somewhere. So here, 0 0.71 terminates right at the 1 here. So it terminates at the 1. That means it ends at the 1. If your decimal ends somewhere, there's a way to turn it into a fraction, guaranteed. So here are the place values, right? The 7 is in the 10th place, and the 1 is in the 100th place. So there are many different ways to do this, but by recognizing that the 1, the smallest place value determines the fraction denominator, right? We can quickly say, oh, this is going to be equal to what? 71, you take the digits you're given, over, in this case, 100. So all I did there was put it over 100 because the smallest place value is the hundredths place, which gives us the denominator of 100. And, you know, all, all terminating decimals work this way. 1, 1, 2, 3. Well, now what happened? Well, here, we look at our place value. We have, again, tenths, hundredths, and then this place is the thousandths, right? And then the ten thousandths after that. Ten thousandths, right? That's working just opposite the way our place value works, right? Above uh, to, or to the left of the decimal. And to the left of the decimal, it goes one, right? Ten, hundred, thousand, and so forth. Here, it starts at tenths not once, but tenths, and then hundreds, uh, thousands, ten thousands, and so forth, hundred thousands. So here, what would this be equal to? Well, again, we have one, one, two, three over ten thousand, right, using our place value. So one thing we could say is any decimal that terminates is rational. We can find a way to write them as simple fractions. Another category um, of decimals that you're frequently going to be seeing are repeating decimals. So for example, 0 0.3 repeating. The threes go on forever, but this is equal to one third, right? And so in general, if you're given a repeating fraction of decimal, excuse me, like 0 0.1 repeating, a nice shortcut, if you're um, looking at a repeating decimal and you know you have a repeating chunk of a pattern, in this case, one, 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 and so forth, right? The line above the one means the ones are repeating. Then you take the repeating chunk, the digit, 
in this case 1, and put it over 9. The 9, there's one 9 here for the one digit that's repeating. We could have done that with uh, 0.3 repeating. Think about that. Here, the 3 is repeating. Put it over 1, 9, and we get 3 over 9, or 1 third. And in many cases, it's just actually this simple. If I have 0.12 repeating, and the 1 and the 2 are repeating, well, then we get 12 over 99, right? Here, there are two digits repeating, so we put it over two nines. So in general, with the repeating chunk of digits here, if we don't have any parts of the decimal that are not not repeating, or that are not repeating, um, then we can just take those digits, right, and put them over some number of nines. And those number of nines will always equal the number of digits repeating. As a last example, if we had 0 0.7172 repeating, that would just be 7172 over 9999. And if you have a calculator, you can test these, right? Just plug in your numerator, 7172, divided by 9999, and you'll get your repeating, um, your repeating decimal there. It might round the last place value, but it is the repeating decimal. So what does this mean? Well, these decimals are non-terminating, but they're repeating. So non-terminating, right, repeating decimals, that's these right here, those are all rational. So the only type of decimal that does not, or is not, cannot be simplified into a simple fraction is an irrational decimal or an irrational number, excuse me. So one last look at a rational before we go to irrational number finished. Okay, so the last example um, that I'll show you really quickly is this situation where you have, let's say, 0 0.1, and then you have 2 repeating. So unlike 0 0.121212, this equals 0 0.12222, and so forth. A strategy you might use here to find the fraction is to say, okay, well, this is kind of like right? 0 0.2 repeating, only smaller. 0 0.2 repeating is 2 ninths, right? And so this is 0 0.02 repeating. So it's 10 times smaller. So this repeating part right here is 10 times smaller than 2 ninths, so that's 2 ninetieths. So this decimal, right, when I write it out, first I have just 0.1 or 1 tenth. So it equals 1 tenth plus 2 over 90. And that 2 over 90 represents the 0 0.02222 repeating, which is just 10 times smaller than 2 ninths, right? 2 over 90 is 10 times smaller than 2 over 9. So we can add these two, right? Instead of um, 1 tenth, we can get 9 over 90, plus 2 over 90 is 11 over 90. So in some of the future modules, you will be doing this. I just want to show you that if there is a repeating pattern in your decimal, it doesn't matter how weird it looks. As long as it's a repeating pattern, even if it never ends, you can turn it into a simple fraction. The only kinds of decimals that are irrational, right? So now we look at irrational numbers, are decimals that are called non-terminating, so they do go on forever, and they are non-repeating. So there's no known way to turn these into fractions. So you might see something like this, 0 0.112314, dot, dot, dot. These digits go on forever with no repeating pattern. So they're irrational. They can't be turned into a fraction. Also, if you see something where there's a nice distinct pattern, let's so say it's 0 point, pick a different color, 0 0.12345678, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so forth. Well, this is still irrational, even though there's a pattern, right? The digits are almost just counting up in a sense. You, it's not a repeating pattern. A repeating pattern means that you have a chunk of numbers that's repeating, like in our example here, um, 0.7172 repeating. The 712, 7172 would go 7172, 7172, and so forth. It's a repeating pattern. Here there's a pattern, it's just not repeating. Other types of numbers you might see as irrational, of course, are pi, right, which is about 3.1415926 and so forth. Don't let them get you. If they give you um, a decimal approximation of pi, like 3.14, that's not pi. They'll give you the pi symbol. Other types of numbers you'd be dealing with for irrational are not the square roots, right, 
of non-perfect squares, like the square root of 8, the square root of 2. And I'll, you know, I'll go in order here. Let's just count up and basically notice that we take the square root of 2, or the square root of 3, or the square root of 5, let's get the square root of 4, square root of 6, square root of 7, square root of 8, skip the square root of 9, and so forth. Right? These numbers are all irrational. The square root of a whole number, right? these are whole numbers, that's a non-perfect square, is definitely irrational. One thing you might see in these modules, and we'll look at it a set in a moment, if you see the square root of a decimal, don't assume, like 1.69, that it's irrational. Right? This is rational. Square root of a decimal um, is not as easy to identify as being rational or irrational. So if you get one, try to find the square root. This is just 1.3, and, and the reason I know that, I'm thinking of the square root of 169, which is 13. The square root of 1.69, right, is just what? Well, 1.69 is 100 times smaller, so it makes sense that the square root is 10 times smaller. If you multiply 1.3 by itself, it's like multiplying a number that's 10 times smaller by another number that's 10 times smaller than 13. So altogether, you get a number that's 100 times smaller, or 1.69. So with these decimal um, square roots, things are a little bit trickier, right? But you can probably quickly find the result because it'll look a lot like a nice perfect square. So all this comes down, you know, in, in this module. Let's look at these examples. 4.12. Well, that would be 4 and 12 hundredths. It's rational. It terminates. Square root of 12 is the square root of a non-perfect square. 7 pi over 12? You multiply by pi and divide by 12, you still got an irrational result. And in general, when you multiply by an irrational number, right, you're going to be stuck in this world of irrational numbers. Like pi over 6, another irrational number. The square root of 3 itself is squared. So in this case, this is almost like a counterexample to what I said, right? In the other cases, we're multiplying um, pi right, by a rational number, and we get an irrational or unfriendly result. The square root of 3 is irrational, but it's an interesting case because if you multiply it by itself, you get a rational number. And that's a very special case because here you square the square root. And think about it. If you take the square root of um, 4, let's just look at a, counter, a similar example. If you had the square root of 4, that's 2. But the square root of 4 squared, what's that? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And 2 squared is back to 4. So the square root of any number, a, squared, is just a. And that, the logic here is you're, you know, squaring and square roots are inverse operations. So even if you're given the square root of an irrational number like 3, if you square it, you just get 3. So that's a, a nice way to actually kind of get out of the world of irrational numbers is by squaring the square root. All right, and we got it. Let's try a couple more. 2.2 .2 is rational. Negative 4 and 1 29th, not a friendly number, right? But it's a simple fraction. You can just turn that mixed number into a simple fraction. The cubed root of, of 17, so what number times itself three times gets 17? Well, it's irrational. 17 pi, irrational. Square root of 30, irrational. Okay, so here, you know, 0 0.02 or 0 0.06, you could just think of that, right? If you Think of this proportionally by multiplying both by 100. It's a 2 over 6. It's rational. The square root of 9 plus 17 is really the square root of 16 or 4. That's rational. The square root of pi is irrational. And 1.732 is rational, right? 95 over 4, you're looking at a simple fraction, so it's rational. 0 0.357 repeating. That's a repeating decimal. That would be 357 over 999. The square root of 7 over 3 is irrational. Pi minus 1, irrational. This negative square root of 5, irrational. So in all these cases, right, you're dealing with an irrational number. You can't add or subtract away from an irrational number. And one last one, 45 is rational. 6 and 1 fourths, 0.125. All these numbers can be turned into simple fractions. 5.5 repeating is rational. And the last two are irrational. All right, so I hope this helped. Thanks a lot.